What's up everyone, Aaron Chats back with you again for some more Free Space 2, Blue Planet, War in Heaven. We are on mission 8, which I believe is in Act 2. And look at this new user tip, which somebody actually tipped me off uh, in a previous YouTube video, so thank you for that. Yeah, the dogfighting in this is actually much more difficult, so there you go. But we're keeping the same difficulty, which is actually medium, I believe. So there you go. What are we waiting for? Let's give this a shot. I, again, um, I think we're on... Uh, mission 8. You know what would be helpful? Since nobody can hear, since I don't make this really bad, that I actually plug in my uh, headphones. So let me just do that real quick and then we'll get started. One sec. Here we go, here we go. Okay, there we go. Now the explosions and stuff won't sound on the camera. Here we go. You guys ready? Oh, here it comes. Oh, Act 2! Apothesis! I hope that's how it is sound. <laughs> oh, I gotta read more crap? Oh god, okay, okay. Uh, there we go. Uh oh, I don't know what this music is either. Okay, here we go. I need to get away from the ship. With Manuel and Kasim gone, the Navajo has disbanded everyone's spirits down. It feels like a tomb. It wasn't like this before the Blitz. More and more, our first fleet is being retained for classified defensive operations. Whole ships have dropped off fleet nets, swallowed up by Admiral Byrne's project. I'm not going to be part of that. Defense is just another word for sitting and waiting for defeat. I have a glowing letter here from Captain Telfer. I'm going to pull some strings. I'm going to pull strings and request a transfer out to first fleet entirely. Out of the first fleet entirely. The Jovians and Martians are still trying to hit back. I have an idea where I'd like to serve, and if I pull the right strings, I feel like something inside of me is changing. I don't know what or how. I'm not really sure where I am right now. Okay, here's an addendum. I got the transfer. I'm going to Second Fleet. I'm going to serve with Lord. I'm going to serve with Lorna Sims on the Indus. I like what I saw in her at the Meridian Battle in Riza. Her fire, her grit. Keep it in your pants. I was told the Indus was the finest frigate in two fleet. Usually it's called second fleet. But I've also heard that the Indus is a death ship, a black hole for rookies, a suicide posting. I shuttle out to Mars side at 2240. I guess I'll find out. Owned! Oh, here we go. For the attention of Sub-Lieutenant Laporte. Welcome to your new home, Sub-Lieutenant Laporte. I'm Captain Sorensen, and I'm proud to call the Indus mine. I'm glad that you made the decision to join up with my ship and crew. I'm also aware that you come with high recommendations from Captain Telfer, so I know that you will serve this ship with distinction and valor. In the wake of Steel's massive raid against Earth, GTVA forces have largely withdrawn to Jupiter's sector to resupply and regroup. Raids against Earth's sector continue, but for the most part, Second Fleet is under only limited strategic pressure. Fleet Admiral Natreba is in conference with Fleet Admiral Calder of the Jovian Rim Fleet survivors. By all indications, it looks like some major operation is about to commence. I'll leave you under the care of your squadron leader. I believe you two have met. Gross. Sims here. We've been introduced before. Welcome to the Indus. I'm sorry I wasn't on deck to see you in. I read over your jacket. You're clearly a skilled pilot, if still a little green. I need that talent to rebuild this squadron. I want to make it clear that things operate differently here in Two Fleet. The Martian military has a reputation for rowdiness and vivacious behavior. This reputation is well earned, but it doesn't mean you can be insubordinate without consequence. It's esprit de corps, not poor discipline, that keeps Two Fleet running. There are only a few veteran pilots left on the Indus, so don't worry if we don't go crazy over the arrival of you and your fellow replacements. We're at the front lines. We've seen a lot of faces come and go. Don't expect a shiny badge or a badass squadron name. We're out here to do our jobs, not to fly air shows. Welcome aboard. Hey, Laporte. I just got word of your transfer to the Indus. You may remember me from the Nauticus incident. I'm de facto squadron leader aboard the Yangtze, since our CAG is a psychological casualty. Lorna Sims and I go way back. Admiral Natraba is about to select forces for a big joint operation against the GTBA. Two months ago, the Indus was the best frigate in Two Fleet, and Lorna Sims was a rising star. She got that job because five officers before her couldn't handle it. 
But the last few weeks have really wrecked her. The Indus Air Wing has been running a 400% casualty rate. Sims and Flight Lieutenant Levi are about the only two left from the original squadron. Replacements show up and die almost daily. Word has it that Lorna doesn't give her pilots call signs anymore, just numbers. The crew chief says she's banned the flight deck from painting names on her ships. I think all the new pilots have turned into one long red blur for her. Worse, I think she prefers it that way. And all those rooks can tell. It's killing morale. I want the Indus flying alongside the Hanks here if we do go for a big strike. And I want her pilots eager to follow their captain. But Admiral Natraba will never choose a sick ship for his own task. Do me a favor. See if you can shake Sims up. I've attached a personality profile that might help you out. I hope you get a chance to review it. Cordially yours, Karen A. May. Oh, good. Finally, I get a new ship. Uh, whatever that name is, Interceptor. Ultra high performance Interceptor precision strike cleft. Massively variable hull geometry. High afterburner velocity with good sustainability, capable of reverse thrust. Ugh. Mounts rapier can for anti-fighter attack. Precision paveway bombs on external racks or strikes against heavy defended targets at long range. <laughs> Survivability inside beam flak envelopes is low. Okay. Pilots transitioning to this ship from the Ulan space are advised to practice simulators with hand-ons. Be advised that the simulator modules have known discrepancy with control layouts and the latest block to can power real. Oh well. Yo, Laporte, out of the boat, into the hole. Let's go, let's go. I hear you and the other new transfers have been bitching about the lack of training sorties. I get that. I mean, if I didn't know this ship flew a couple dozen sorties a day off a slot deck, overworking a deck crew that gets four hour sleep shifts and hasn't had a leave day in almost nine weeks, I'd be bitching for more flight time too. And I just assume you don't know all that. Anyway, today's your lucky day, Laporte. I'm taking you out for some hands on time with your country. Get used to the cockpit, the new avionics, all that. Sound good? Oh. I already had the deck fit out your Kentroy with weapons packages. We'll jump out, putter around, and come back. It'll give you a chance to get a feel for the Interceptor and its weapons. The Yangtze is handling a Jump 5 alert for this sector. So if anything goes wrong, expect Flight Lieutenant Ng May and her man to come charging to the rescue, as usual. I know you've had a couple discipline problems in the past. Your record says your last wing leader was your uncle, of all people. Consider this a chance to impress me with those earthborn manners of yours, aren't Let's go. Your goal is to jolt Captain Sims out of her guilt-fueled death spiral. In my experience, Sims responds well to confidence and plain talk. But if you're too by the book, she'll just ignore you. If you can demonstrate intelligence or experience, she'll listen. But failing that, she does some of her best thinking when angry. Just don't patronize or disrespect her or her abilities. And while she responds to honest emotion, don't get too empathetic. She hates that. If you criticize her, criticize her professionally, not personally. The worst thing you can do is convince her you're an idiot. She'll tolerate a surprising amount of insubordination as long as it's going somewhere. Once you've raised the topic, don't back down. <laughs> Primary objective, speak to Sims. Oh, so this mission's probably just like a, yeah, it's probably just a, um, an intro to set up this new act, I, I guess, I hope. Should be. Indus Control, Whoa. this is Alpha Whoa. outbound for a training run. Pass my regards to Captain Sorens. And don't get into any trouble while I'm away, alright? Roger that, Lorna. Traffic out there is light today. Steel must be resting his crews. And that does have a few intermittent contacts, so right. be careful with the cubs. What's going on here? Your ship slave to mine for the moment, oh, Look. Okay. Get ready to jump. Brand new throttle stick. So treat her well. She's a beauty. 
Stroke the stick and she jumps like a twitchy cult. Jink around. Get a feel for her. Don't forget to kick in the reverse thrust. We use that for saber dancing. You've even got reverse afterburners. Put the throttle in reverse and kick the burners to try them out. I like the ship. Marks a nice symbolic break from First Fleet, don't you think, sir? Your transfer request made it quite specific that you had some problems with First Fleet. Is Second Fleet living up to your expectations, Sub Lieutenant? Uh, let's go for uh, number one. They were fighting to lose the war. They spent a lot of time and energy on remembering the Fallen, and not nearly enough on killing Tevs. Most Earthers are too deep in Ubuntu to get the job done right. In Two Fleet, we honor the Fallen by doing our jobs and earning some payback. I concur, sir. Number one. The best way to honor the Fallen is by carrying out our duties with unflagging diligence. And I do mean that earnestly, as trite as it sounds. It's not an easy task with so many gone. No. N no, it's not. I'm sensing some veiled criticism here, Laporte. You're sharper than I expected. You don't have to beat around the bush. Give me your thoughts on my command performance, Laporte. You've clearly got some. There's a problem! Number one! Sir, I left First Fleet to escape pervasive combat shock. But your attitudes towards these new pilots is giving me deja vu. Don't be timid about the issue. Give it to me straight. Damn. I remember one. your war cry from Riza. You're not living up to it. You haven't convinced this squadron that they're gods of war. You've convinced them that they're doomed. Because you act like they're already dead. That's an easy attitude for you to take, Sub-Lieutenant. Maybe you don't understand what it's been like out here these past few weeks. This is not the Solaris, safest ship in the fleet. We are right on the bloody edge here. Let's see here. Uh, time for number two! Sir, if you want to do something about that 400% casualty rate, stop treating the rookies like they're already dead. Make it clear that they're your people now. Whoa, whoa, knock it off. Jump flash, tally bandits, two by two, 12 clicks. Gunship killers. An Aurora must abtract our Japan vector the men. We're in trouble. Four to two, and they're wolf pack pilots. As good as us, probably. I thought I'd seen the worst with those SOC pilots. Wow. Stay frosty, team. It's gonna take too long to recharge and get a nav fix, so I'm gonna call for backup. You handled worse. One. Last time I did this, I was flying with wingmates I knew in a ship that fit like a glove. Stay calm, too, and do exactly what I say. Forget going for kills. Just evade, evade, evade. I'm going to grab two of them and keep them occupied until backup arrives. Okay. If you need cover in any point, just... Alpha 2, Fox 3. Weapons Abort. failure. Call Fox every time you shoot an aspect. This one's gonna frag you. Sims, uh, I'm getting red lights under Master Wet Act up, and my trigger's a lot up. They gave you that bird? Comments. Okay, the board statements. You've got a rapier feed problem and safety a bit overboard. I need you to select AVAC bus and then cycle module. AVAC bus. One, two defensive. Can I get some backup? Damn, slow in distress, huh? Turn in and burn it. Done. He's got primary back. Okay. <laughs> this is fucking crazy. Alright, get the tail warning. Damn, slow in distress, huh? Turn in and burn it. On my way. Oh. Damn, it's burning. God, you son of a bitch. Lorna, it's Karen. This guy's a cop. On our way. Oh, he's bouncing? No! Whew. That was tense. Raids like this have been going on all month. Their auroras slip in, track your jumps, and call in the mix. 
You were courting danger going out like this, Sims. Check it out, Karen. I kept a rook alive through her first mission. Reminds me of our first time out together. Lorna, I cannot quite tell if you're kidding or not, but I'm sure Laporte here appreciates the effort. That's two you owe me, Arthur. One here, one for the Nauticus. I tried to pass your suggestion on, Flight Lieutenant Ingmay. Apparently Two Fleet isn't as informal as suggested. Your suggestion? Why don't you come to me directly next time you've got a problem with my command style, Flight Lieutenant Ingmay? Instead of throwing sock puppets my way. The Indus needs to solve her own problems if she's going to be picked for this big mob. I want you flying with us, Lorna. Besides, the Yanksy's got trouble enough with its own. Maybe show the newcomers a little love. We've left this batch will stick around longer than the last. Hey, always happy to play go-between for the second place now for females. Captain Sims, if this was a first date, we've got a poor choice of venue. This better not turn into some kind of running joke. The tree cracks down on chain of command romances like a gorilla's hand. And I'll be nice as he is with the casualty. Romances? You hear that, Gavin? The bit love is in the air. Great. My job security is in the hands of a first fleet transfer, a notorious gossip, and the Federation's only space-bearing pig. <laughs> Laporte, let's get back to the end before he builds up any more steam. Take care of you. Watch the news. Alright, well that was a successful mission. She's out, so I guess I'm out too. Laporte, get your skinny ass out of that cockpit. I'm debriefing in the locker room. Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna close down our briefing closet for a two-pilot debrief. Lieutenant Levi's in there showing off his ACM footage anyway. Get that zipper for me? Thanks. Okay, we did good out there. Didn't lose anyone. Burnt some fuel, rattled some Tev Raiders. Good for morale. You can fly. I like that. Need good flyers for our next big off. Look. Uh, I appreciate the pointers about my command attitude. You're getting the hang of the Martian style, and what's more, you're probably right. I'm sick of making new friends and then losing them, but these guys need a leader. But keep in mind, rank matters, even in two feet. One more outburst like that, whether Karen's behind it or not, and you'll be in the brig for insubordination. Granted, it'll only last about ten minutes because I'll need you to fill out the roster, but yeah, okay, you get it. You like the Kenteroy? <laughs> yeah, thought so. That afterburner. Wow. Beautiful kick. Got to use first. Beta Wing chased off an Aurora shadowing us. He must have traced our jump out and passed it to those Nicks. Steel puts the pressure on every damn inch of the fleet, and we're not even his primary goal. Right. Look. One more thing. I'm, um, I'm pretty flattered by your attentions. But we've got to sort something out. Don't get me wrong. I'll tumble a pilot off another ship as fast as the next woman, but in the same squadron, that's a no-go. So, I'm afraid you're getting shot down at least once today, Laporte. No more schoolgirl flirt after missions. Towel. Nice. Okay. Laporte, you keep all that shit straight. I'll get in real tight with the new pilots. We got ourselves a squadron and a ship. Nice doing business. <laughs> well, other than forgetting to use reverse thrust and the, the uh... The creepiness of the uh, the what's going on there you go uh, so that was pretty much an easy mission in the first one so uh, that was the first start of act two mission eight uh, remember like comment subscribe thanks for watching everybody we'll see you in the next one